Hi there. In this video, we are going to learn about solving equations with zero, one, or infinite solutions. So what does that mean? How can an equation have no solution or more than one solution? So um, we're going to focus on solving equations that can give us either no solutions or infinitely many solutions because we're used to solving an equation where we get one solution. But I just kind of want to talk about what does it mean if I'm getting no solution or infinite solution. So um, we're gonna think about this graphically. So I'm gonna draw a couple little graphs here for you just so that you can see what I mean. Here, let me fix my line. So if I have two lines and I draw them on the same graph, there's three ways that these lines can interact with each other, okay? So my first one is the one that I'm typically used to where I'm just gonna have two lines that intersect. My next one, I'm gonna have two lines, but they're never gonna cross. And in my last one, I'm gonna have two lines, but this time they're always gonna cross. So these are my three ways that when I have two lines on the same graph that they can interact with each other. So what we're doing when we're solving equations with zero, one, or infinitely many solutions is we're taking two equations of two different lines and we're seeing where are, the, are they going to intersect? And that's what this is telling me. Um, so if my lines intersect in this first example here, I have one solution. In this, that one does not look like one solution. Let me try that again. Here, we'll zoom this in. I have one solution because my lines cross. In this next case, I don't have any solutions because my lines never cross. And in my third case, well, I have an infinite number of solutions oops, solutions, because my lines always cross. Infinite solutions, okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. So when I'm going and I'm solving these equations, I'm going to have variables on both sides. And we are looking to, when I solve, identify what's gonna happen, what type of solution I'm going to have based on the answer that I get. So how am I gonna identify my solution types? So I'm gonna focus on this first one right here, actually in the middle. When I get one solution, this is your typical solving equation that you know how to solve. You're gonna get all the variables on one side, you're gonna get all the constants on the other side, and then you're gonna end up with an answer. It's something like x is equal to four, or it doesn't matter what variable you have, w is equal to negative two. You're just gonna get your variable is equal to some number, just exactly what you're used to when you're solving. This is where things get a little bit different when you have zero or infinite solutions. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that your variables cancel. All of a sudden, when you try to get all the variables on one side, they're gonna disappear from both sides. You're not gonna have any variables left. And how can you tell the difference between the two answers? Well, you have zero solutions when you have your numbers that are not equal. So you're gonna be left with something like 12, equals seven. Well, does 12 equal seven? No. Is 12 ever gonna equal seven? No. So in this case, when you have two numbers that are not equal, you are going to have no solution. Okay, but on the other hand, if we come over here to the infinite solution, your variables are gonna cancel out and then you're gonna end up with two numbers that are exactly the same, which ultimately come down to zero equals zero. But for example, you know, I could be left with seven equals seven, or negative two equals negative two, or 12 equals 12, okay? Or zero equals zero. Ultimately, if you have 12 equals 12, ideally you could subtract 12 from both sides and end up with zero equals zero. I like to think of it that way because to me, zero equals zero is kind of similar looking to infinity. I draw my infinities like this or you can draw them like this sideways eight or infinity like this. It kind of, to me, looks like an infinity, so it helps me remember that that's an infinite solution. 
Okay, so I have three examples for you so that we can go ahead and see one of each kind mathematically what these are going to look like when you're solving. So the first one right here, I am going to draw my line down the equals so that it helps me remember whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And when I'm combining like terms, I remember like things only on one side I combine. So first I'm going to take care of this distribution on both sides. So four times X is four X and four times two is eight. And I bring down my three X and two times X is two X and two times six is 12. Okay, now I'm gonna combine together my like terms. So here I have four X, here I have negative three X and together that makes X and I'm gonna bring down my eight equals two X minus 12. Okay, typically I like my variables on the left side but in this case, it's a little bit more work if I do that because it would make it negative. So I'm actually gonna subtract X from both sides. I bring these guys down. So I bring down my negative eight, two X minus X is just X and then I bring down my minus 12. And to get X on a side by itself, I'm gonna add 12 to both sides. This is gonna cancel out and I'm left with X is equal to four. That's my final answer. I get it, my variable is equal to a number. That means here I just have one solution, which is what I'm used to when I solve. Okay, let's see what the other ones are gonna look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line down the middle and I'm gonna take care of my distribution. Okay, four times y is four y, four times one is four and then minus one and two times two y is four y, and two times three is six. Okay, I'm gonna combine together my like terms. Here I have like terms. So I end up with, I have, whoops. Four y minus five, combine together my like terms, is equal to four y minus six. Okay, I need to get all my variables on one side. I like them on the left side, so I'm gonna subtract four y from both sides. Well, hey, when I do that, both my variables go away on both sides. Now I'm left with no variables. So I just bring down what I'm left with. I have a negative five on this side. And on my right side, I have a negative six. Does negative five equal negative six? No. Will it ever equal negative six? Will negative five ever equal negative six? No. So here, I have no solution. Okay, last one. This one looks pretty long, huh? Okay, so again, I'm gonna handle this just like I did the other ones. I'm gonna take care of my distribution. Three times V is three V and three times two is six plus V. Four times V is four V, four V, or sorry, four times one is four plus 10. Okay, I'm gonna combine together my like terms. Here I have like terms on this side and I have like terms over here. So 3V plus V is 4V. And on this side I have 4V plus six. And you'll notice, you might start to already notice what's gonna happen here. If I wanna get all my variables on one side, I'm going to, I like them on the left, so I'm gonna subtract 4V from both sides these cancel out and then I'm left with six is equal to six. And you can take this one step further and you can subtract six from both sides and you can end up with zero equals zero. But honestly, when you get to this step, you should already know this is an infinite solution because it's exactly equal on both sides. So I would write infinite solutions. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. And when you're doing these, remember, you just wanna look for when your variables, your variables most likely are going to cancel out as long as you're getting zero or infinite solutions. And we're just looking for our equations equal. Do I get the same number equals itself or do I get two numbers that are never equal? Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.